back to another vlog. I decided to just sit down and start this vlog because I've been wanting to vlog for the last couple of days. But starting and doing the intro is always the hardest part for me because you have to get in the mindset of talking to the camera. And sometimes I'll put off starting a vlog because I literally just feel so awkward sitting down and starting it and being like, hi guys, or I'll film myself being like, hey guys, welcome back to the vlog like 10 times in a row before I feel less dumb. But I did it first try this time. So I wanted to just start the vlog. It's a late Friday afternoon. I'm just finishing up a couple things. I just filmed a video for Symbiotica, which was fun. I made a ginger pomegranate vitamin C mocktail. It's really good. So I need to edit that. I need to record the podcast, but I don't know if I'm gonna do that today or if I'm gonna do it tomorrow, which is Saturday morning. It's another girl talk episode because those are really highly requested. Every time I do a girl talk episode, people say they want those more often. So I did one, I think four or five episodes ago. So I'm gonna do another one. And then I, pro I probably will record that tomorrow morning. It's a little bit later in the afternoon than I would like right now for the amount of things I've gotten done today. I've had a shit mental health week. Like I've been in the trenches this week. Um, and yesterday I started to feel a little bit better. And then today I'm kind of feeling like probably 80% back to normal, which is why I decided to start vlogging. Yeah, I've definitely been a little bit depressed lately. So I'm getting myself back together. I'm trying to get back on track. Is the lighting too dark because I'm backlit? Let me move. I've got like this light, which everybody, like every content creator has. Is that better? Maybe, I don't know. But yeah, I also have such bad anxiety today, but it's my fault because I went to go get a chai this morning. I have this favorite coffee shop in Arlington. It's called Caldi's. They make the best chai I've ever, ever had. And I went to get a chai and I was gonna get mad at cold brew. And they called my name and I went and I picked up my order and I left. And then it wasn't until after I left that I realized they had accidentally given me an iced latte instead of an iced chai. And this was from this morning. So it's like completely gross now. But I didn't want it to go to waste, so I was like, okay, I'm just gonna start drinking it. But I just can't handle espresso. And so I had like this much of it a couple hours ago, and I was like, okay, that's probably enough. So then, because I wanted a fun little drink, I went and I got a Doc Pop from the fridge. This is like a poppy, and it's meant to be a Dr. Pepper. And I love these so much, but I didn't realize that they had caffeine. It has 32 milligrams of natural caffeine. I didn't know that. I really enjoy a doc pop, but I didn't know they had caffeine. So then I started drinking this. And then like 40 minutes ago, my heart started beating faster. And I was like, why am I so anxious? And then I realized I've had a ton of caffeine today and didn't even know. So I just thought that was funny. Cause I was like, why am I causing my own anxiety for no reason? Um, but anyway, I literally have this mocktail, a half drunk doc pop, an iced latte that's disgusting and two water bottles my big simply modern cup and then this water bottle i got from the gym and i'm probably still dehydrated that's the thing but i just like this is such girlhood having five half drunk beverages in front of me also if you can see this mess behind me please ignore i've already started cleaning out my closets and things and i've got like um a ton of clothes that i need to donate behind me and i also feel like in a similar vein to the idea that the first clip of the vlog is the hardest to film, I feel like cleaning out my closets, no big deal. But does anybody else feel like getting the donation clothes to the donation center is the part of that task that's just like seems insurmountable? I'll clean out a closet all day long, but then it will sit in a room for like months or at least weeks until I manage to get the motivation to take it to the donation center. So I did read this thing today i didn't know that thread up like you can donate your clothes directly to thread up which is like an online thrift store i didn't know you could do that which it makes sense because how else would they get secondhand clothing like we'll send you a label and then you can just ship your clothes off to them and then if they sell your clothes you get commission so i might do that because that seems easier than like trying to list each individual item on poshmark um and also they do all the work so it kind of sounds Ideal, so I might try to do that. I'm trying to think if I have any life updates to share. Probably not. Yeah, just mentally, it's been a month, honestly. Last week and the first half of this week were 
pretty rough. I feel like I've been experiencing executive dysfunction, um, I think. And I thought that was only like an ADHD symptom. I was having all these feelings, experiencing all these emotions. So I just decided to look them up and try to see if I could make sense of it. And executive dysfunction kept coming up. And so I started reading about executive dysfunction. And I don't know if I have that because I don't know if that's like a symptom for bipolar or like OCD or if it's just like a generally mentally ill thing. I'm not sure. All I know is that I feel like that's what I'm experiencing. So like the trouble, like a really difficult time starting, managing and finishing tasks of any kind. It just like feels, it just feels like a bigger deal than it really is right now. I've been trying to get back into my self care. I set aside some time last night and just like got real with myself, you know? Um, and I feel better, so. You guys, I just realized that I filmed this video which involves me like holding things up to the camera with the most disgusting nails of all time. I wanted to get my acrylics off for the first time in a year, literally since last January. And obviously my natural nails are incredibly thin and weak, so I painted them with this tinted nail hardener. It's meant to strengthen your nails and it's also like this pretty color. But I forgot that the reason I was getting acrylics for a year is that nail polish chips in like five seconds. I painted these just the other day. And look how, I mean, yeah, you can see for yourself. And I filmed this video like holding things up to a camera. This is a branded video with my nasty nails. If I was the brand, I'd be like, reshoot. I'm gonna submit it and hope for the best and hope nobody notices. I also think I'm just gonna start getting acrylics again. I wanted to stop because it just takes a long time. So I was like, I'm gonna be lower maintenance. Acrylic nails are out for 2024 and I've had them off for like two weeks and I'm like, I don't love this. I kind of want to get them back, but at least when you have acrylic nails on, your nails look good for like a month before you have to redo them. So I edited the video and then I was writing down submissions from the podcast, like for the Girl Talk episode. Some of these are crazy. One of them was like, my best friend's husband told me he was attracted to me. What do I do? I love having these girl chats with you guys because I feel like it helps me get a sense of like, what is the community going through? What are, what's on our mind? What's on the collective consciousness? Um, so I love that. But I think I'm just gonna get a couple more things done and then call it for today. Okay, you guys, so I finished up for the day and I went to go get packages and I wanted to open one of them with you because I'm starting this fun little project from Grey Bandit. Another one of their midtown denim jackets. I already have this jacket and I'm obsessed with it. It is the best denim jacket you could ask for. It's perfectly oversized. It fits really well. It hangs beautifully. Like it's just the best denim jacket. And it's always out of stock. But a couple of months ago, I decided I wanted to make a patch jacket to commemorate travels and just different places that are significant to me and Matt. I started collecting the patches and then I was like, you know what? There's just no denim jacket that's better. But I also sized up in this one, even knowing that it's oversized because I wanted one that Matt could also wear. So this is the jacket, but it will also hopefully fit Matt and more space for patches. So I'm gonna show you the patches that I have so far. And then like every place you go, or like national park you visit, or country, or I don't know, anywhere that sells a patch, I guess, you can get a new one. I know that like patch jackets aren't anything revolutionary or crazy or anything, but I just think this is such a fun way to commemorate travels. I also um, collect stickers because I'm making like a travel poster. I wanted to do both. The vision is, I know this kind of looks crazy, but imagine just every inch of white space on this board covered in travel stickers. I feel like it's gonna be colorful and eclectic and just like a cool collage and it'll go on a wall somewhere in our future home. And then I wanted something wearable too. Um, I just really like traveling. So I am also doing the patches. So I'll show you what I have so far. I'll have to figure out placement, but I've got a Virginia patch, obviously. 
Matt and I, we've met in Virginia. We've lived in Virginia together. I'm from Virginia. I also have daffodils for my hometown. Gloucester is the daffodil capital of the US. So I've got some daffodils, Scotland patch. I have a couple of Scotland patches just because it's really easy to get patches over there. Like I have this Loch Lomond one. We went there and we were there for New Year's. We've got Pike Place Market because we love Washington State. We love Seattle. I couldn't find a Florida patch that I liked. So I just got this palm tree. Edinburgh has cool patches with the castle and everything. I've got one for Colorado. And then this is another um, Scotland patch. And then I also have Loch Ness. And I also have a France and a London patch coming. And then I also want to get Tennessee... I think that's the only other state I'm missing. But yeah, so I haven't figured out the placement and everything, obviously, but like imagine just this cool jacket totally decked out with patches and it's like something we can have forever, something that you can just keep adding to. And I have like all these visions in my head of like cute pictures of us traveling all over, wearing the jacket, Fergus in the jacket. I just have a vision, so I'm really excited about it. And I just think souvenirs are so fun, but sometimes it's like, you just don't wanna collect more and more and more things, especially because some souvenirs can be like, I don't know the right word, kitschy, chuggy, I don't know. I just don't want like random stuff. So that's why I'm doing the poster and the jacket because it's decorations, like the poster is a decoration and the jacket is wearable and they're both just like kind of living, dynamic, evolving pieces of our our memories together. So I, I need to sew them on. A lot of them are iron on, but I actually don't have an iron, so I'm gonna sew them, I think. just finished doing my makeup I like the way it came out today Merit gifted me some products so I did a full face I need to do my hair um, I need to move the laundry around I'm sure you saw the mountain of laundry that I threw onto the bed that's all clean we have this horrible habit of letting the laundry pile up and then having to do like four or five loads at once because we both really hate putting away laundry it's like our least favorite household task so the last load of my laundry is in the washer now. At some point today, all of that laundry needs to be folded and put away. But before that, we're gonna go out and run some errands. So I need to get dressed. Fergus's seven month birthday today, which I know you're probably thinking, why do you even care? But we have to go to the pet store to get him some new pet food anyways. We're like, he gets a little, a treat or a new toy or something because it's his seven month birthday. And then we want to take him to Great Falls. So I need to be warm and it's probably going to be really muddy at Great Falls. It's actually not as cold as I thought. It's only 40, but I want to be warm anyway. I'm going to wear this brown waffle knit like Henley style shirt. It's from Free People. Very cute very outdoorsy. My hair is kind of a mess. Um, I definitely need to wash it today. I don't know if I can get away with not wearing a hat. Maybe. I don't know. It's kind of a wreck. We'll see. So today's Sunday. Yesterday was a glorious do nothing day. Usually Sundays are our do nothing weekend days and then Saturdays we'll go out and like either be social or go on a little adventure or what have you. But I just woke up yesterday and I was like, I need to rot all day so i recorded the podcast but other than that i slept until like 2 p.m i stayed in bed and then i laid on the couch i just like laid in different positions pretty much all day yesterday and it was amazing so today we're gonna take the puppy on a nice nice big walk i just put on just black leggings and i guess i will wear a beanie i've been posting so much like outdoorsy travel content lately that I feel like I need to get a little bit of a break, post some fashion and beauty stuff. I'm gonna take my big camera though because I wanna keep practicing with it. And I started this um, Instagram account last Sunday called Daffodils and Thistle. It's gonna be like a travel scrapbook for me, like a place where I can post like how I'm practicing with 
photography and everything. But on my main account, I think I need to give it a little bit of a break because I've been doing a lot. This perfume makes sense for the day. I'm gonna do Stag. Stag by the Maker. So that was Stag. It's very woodsy. It could be a masculine smell as well. I like perfumes like that. Look at all this laundry. This is a big sparkling water household and this is one of Matt's top favorites. I think I am a San Pellegrino girl. When Matt was living in Texas, we drank these so much in a Tapa Chico with a little bit of tequila and a couple lime wedges, maybe a splash of like pomegranate juice or cucumber in there as well, not with the pomegranate, but separately. So good. Yo. Matthew, yeah. you can get ready now. Seven months old, Fergus. I can't believe it. I was just watching the first video that I ever made with him in it, like, you know, first weekend of him at home, and he was so small. Oh, you're such a good boy. Such a good boy. Sorry if you can hear the washer dryer, but if you have a gold retriever, you probably know. Sitting on the floor. An invitation, let's see how long it takes. Good boy. <laughs> I don't think I've ever sat on the floor of this house since bringing him home without him coming to sit in my lap. Good boy, Fergus. Oh, you're such a good boy. Fergus might be seven months old. He might be 65 pounds, but he's a lap dog. Um, and if you think he's not a lap dog, you'd be wrong. Look at him in my lap. That's classic lap dog behavior. If he wasn't a teeny tiny little baby, could he do this? No, you couldn't. Okay, but genuinely, he does not realize how big he's getting, and it's fun, and it's very cute, and I do love it, but sometimes I'll be laying down on the couch, and he'll just come and like jump up, and like step on me, or jump on top of me, and he's getting big enough to the point now where it like knocks the wind out of me. Oh, you saying hi? Vlogging star. You wanna play? You wanna play? Do you wanna play? You can get a new toy today, Fergus. Your birthday. Fergus is a cancer. Did you guys know that? July 16th, Cancer King. Usually I don't have good luck with male water signs, but Fergus is my love. Try it. Oh my gosh. So Fergus loves socks, I think as most dogs do. And he loves wool socks and he's currently trying to eat my wool socks. Every time I'm wearing this brand of sock, he just goes crazy. So Fergus stopped teething like with his baby teeth his really sharp teeth the second they started falling out which was around four months and lasted until like five and a half months so he doesn't bite like that anymore but as you can tell when he wants to play he's mouthy and he's not like biting me in the sense that he's using force he's just like he wants me in his mouth and that's a big retriever thing for labs and goldens. They have soft mouths. They have soft mouths because they were bred to retrieve ducks. So he's not like biting in the sense that he's like trying to put pressure on me. He's just like trying to put me in his mouth because he wants to play. Yeah, you want to play. All right, I'm going to play with him. I'm trying to reach the camera for kids. <laughs> on our way to Great Falls. How would you describe Great Falls? Is it a state park? It's a national. Yeah, it's on the National Park Service website, so maybe it is. I thought it was a state park. It's part of the Potomac River, so you can go on the Virginia side or the Maryland side. You go and you can hike and there's trails and you watch the water stream over big jagged rocks. Yeah, there's moves of like rapids. And then yeah, there's, there's rapids. Falls. That's the word I was thinking. I was like, water rushing over rocks. What is that called? There's rapids and you can do some nature walking, a little hiking and look at the big river below. It's like 30 minutes from us, so it's Fergus's first time. Very excited. Matt's a little upset with Fergus right now. Fergus is, he's really in the teenage stage. And unfortunately his teenage stage started when he was like five months. So it's already been going for a while, but yeah, he's definitely being a teenager right now. Oh, well, this isn't his fault, but he does have an upset stomach. Unfortunately, yeah. I've been the one picking up after him. He has, a better word. he has an upset stomach this weekend, so Matt's been cleaning up. Picking up things. Picking up things. Um, but he's also just, he's like testing boundaries. I don't want to say acting out, because I don't think there's like rebellious intention behind it, because he's a dog. But yeah, he's just a- bit a, more he's demanding. A, yeah. He's adolescent, he's a little bit, a little bit more high maintenance right now. So Matt's a little upset with him. 
But I'm a little bit upset with Matt because he cheated on me in my dream last night <laughs> and I'm not over it. Um, let me tell you guys what happened and you tell me that you think he was in the wrong. So I have this dream and in the dream, for some reason Matt and I are living in my parents' house and my parents aren't there. It's like as if my parents' house was our house. And we meet this woman named Sherry. And I instinctively knew that Sherry was 45 years old. I don't know how. And I cannot even begin to tell you how much 40 year old women and women in their like 40s and 50s, how much they love Matt. How much they've always loved Matt. So I instinctively knew this woman, Sherry, was 45 years old in my dream. And she was a recent divorcee and she needed to be driven around the country collecting her things. And for some reason she like, came to us and Matt volunteered to take her on this giant road trip by themselves to go pick up all of her stuff. And so I was like, Matt, I'm uncomfortable with this. Like, we don't know this woman. She's a super attractive, flirty, recent divorcee. She's 45. You have a weak spot for that age. No, don't. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> okay, well, the dream you did. So I was like, as your wife, I'm coming to you and I. this makes me uncomfortable. I don't want you to go. I have a really bad feeling. And he went because he was like, don't worry about it, she's just a friend, immediately triggered by that phrase. And, and what happens? He cheats on me. So, it was a vivid dream. I took melatonin last night, and maybe that's why I have the worst, almost like crazy dreams when I take melatonin, but I really wanted a good night of sleep. So I woke up sad and immediately like reached out for Matt, and I was like, Matt, I, like, I need to be comforted, you cheated on me in my dream, and he giggles. At the light. Turn left onto Old Dominion Drive. I mean, you dreamt it. Where's the remorse? Where's the apology? Well, so. you have to go back to sleep and get it, I guess. <laughs> if I go back to sleep, you'll apologize to me in my dream? That's, that's kind of what I'm hoping for, yeah. Hmm. So, sleep now. Matt's upset with Fergus and I'm upset with Matt. Yeah, I'm getting it from both ends. I'm just kidding, I'm not actually upset with Matt, but when I do have a dream, that he cheats on me, I do need like extra love and attention the next morning. I feel like that is not uncommon. If we ever meet a 45 year old woman named Sherry, I'm just saying, be on your guard. look out. It's a very gray and gloomy day. The weather in Virginia has been nuts lately. I actually really like this drive because if you live in Nova, you know like the Tysons and McLean area, there's Look just mansions. insane mansions and this road that we're on just has the biggest, most beautiful, extravagant houses. Northern Virginia, I feel like not many people know this, but Northern Virginia has some of the biggest like pockets of wealth in the entire country just because of DC being there and how much like older money is in this area and politicians and all these things. That one, that's why everything is so expensive. Arlington literally rivals places like New York City and LA in terms of rent prices and food prices and all these things. I feel like not a lot of people know that about Virginia. Look at the size of this thing. I feel like it's not showing up on camera, but we are driving by like actual. I think, I don't know if we're gonna go past that amazing. Mansions. There's this one that's literally, it looks like the White House. There's one that has a helicopter path. If you live in this area, I bet you know what street we're on now. <laughs> Close to Great Falls, this, the road with the mansions. I feel like not many people know this, but Northern Virginia is so expensive and has, I think Loudoun County. Didn't we read that Loudoun County is one of like the richest county in the entire country? Um, like more so than places like Calabasas. I didn't, I didn't know that, but I'd, I think it I, is. I'd believe it, honestly. It is. It's Loudoun County. It's the richest county in the entire country. It makes yeah. sense, though, because there was a Real Housewives Potomac edition, which is where we are. That. Yeah, there's Real Housewives of the Potomac. Wow. Also, Arlington, is it the most fittest or like the second most fittest? I think it's the fittest city in America. But... Arlington County which is where we live, is one of the fittest counties in the entire country. Let me look this up too. It is, it's Arlington County. Arlington reigns supreme as nation's fittest city for sixth year in a row. I mean. It makes so much sense though, because if you are from this area, like if you live in Arlington and you walk around, the number of like- Specialized gyms. Luxury or boutique or yeah, highly specialized gyms is insane. Just in our area, I mean, how many are there? I counted countless, nine on my hand. Countless one day. yoga, like Pilates, a mile, 
mile radius from our place. It was like nine or so. That's crazy. And there's that new one that's building up right next to us. Yoga, Pilates, like solid core, core power, things like that. And then there's also like luxury gyms. Little trivia about Virginia, Loudoun County, richest county in the country. Arlington, the most fit county in the country. Fergus loves to look out the window. We try to get him to lie down. He is strapped in. He's in a, a car safe harness and he's strapped in and then we have this like sack that goes in the back seat um, so that he doesn't get the seats dirty, especially because sometimes he gets car sick and we have had to steam clean vomit out of the upholstery in the back. So we got that like that sack right after that happened. Um, so yeah, but we wish he would lay down, but he loves to look out the windows. It's bath day anyway, so we've decided to give Fergus the best day of his life. Get as muddy as he wants. You found some sticks, buddy? show you guys my hair oiling as you can see my hair is like full of oil but I just thought I'd show you now I'm using this Trader Joe's argan oil this is what I put in my mid shaft to the ends I use like probably four full droppers for the length of my hair I didn't use this scalp oil this time because I have dry shampoo in my hair and I've read you shouldn't oil, um, oil your scalp over dry shampoo or product but I also like this Fable and Main oil for my scalp. Usually I'll put the scalp oil in my scalp and I'll massage it and then I'll put the argan oil in my ends and then leave it in there for at least a couple hours. I try to do minimum like three or four hours and then I'll just wash it out. And I feel like it helps a lot with repairing the damage in my hair and making it shinier. And it's also just a fun little ritual. Sundays are usually like a rot day and so it's a good day to like fake tan do the hair oil etc etc i've also tried the meal rosemary oil before and i like that as well so if you are looking to start hair oiling though the trader joe's argan oil was like eight dollars i think and it has lasted a really long time a little bit goes a long way and i really like it so that's a little recommendation also, here's a little workout set review. I just took off the jacket, but this is the same set I was wearing in the first clip on Friday. This is from 437, and I have liked 437 stuff for a while, but I've had a hard time figuring out my sizing. But I figured out everything just runs really small, especially the tops. So now that I figured that out and I size up, I am really liking it. I have worn this brown set with the jacket to work out a bunch of times, and I've also just worn it around the house a bunch of times, and... I like it, but yeah, if you're gonna try 437, I would recommend sizing up for sure. Fergus is definitely a cuddler. He always has been. He's a super cuddly dog. And he had a bath after the park, so he's so soft and he smells so good. Oh, oh. This is what I mean. He literally thinks he's still like 10 pounds. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's not eat my hair. Thank you. <laughs> Personal space? Personal space? What is that? Thank you so much. You like the way my hair smells? It smells like you. When we first brought Fergus home, Way sent him a PR package. It was it literally came addressed to Fergus Skinner and they gifted him. Oh my god, Fergus. They gifted him their dog shampoo. And so he smells like Way right now. He doesn't even know. 
how spoiled he is. This puppy with his Whey shampoo and your Dyson blowouts. You don't even know how spoiled you are. You don't even know what, how bougie you are, Fergus. What I should be doing right now is my laundry. But what I am doing is reading this book. Matthew is reading his book. What are you reading, Matt? The Rhythm of War. This is the final book before the Stormlight Archive. Can you show the cover? Sometimes I'll get asked like girls will ask what books should I recommend to my husband or boyfriend and, and stuff. I always tell them Brandon Sanderson because you love them so much. Yeah, the Stormlight Archive. This is the same series you were reading over the summer, right? I feel like we talked this about this. like, honestly, <laughs> like a year and a half. I feel like we talked about this exact series in the France vlog. Yeah, that, probably did. that would have been true. I mean, the books are pretty hefty. I mean, like this one's yeah. over... 1200, thir almost 1300 pages or something like they're not small. You're killing it. I don't know how well you can see this, but that noise you hear is our fake fireplace crackling. It also puts out warmth like a heater. It's very cozy, adds a very like homey touch to the apartment. And I've got my gym bag for tomorrow packed and on top. And that is a stuffed animal that Fergus destroyed. So we had to put it up so that he can't eat the stuffing. I'm gonna try to see if I can repair it but that sheep is currently in the dog toy graveyard. <laughs> One of my friends made this painting for me when we were in Killen for New Year's. We did a paint night with our friends at the Airbnb and everybody drew a name and painted someone else in the group. And so our friend painted me and Fergus, I'm in my cowgirl boots and we're in the highlands and the purple bits are Heather. And then you can't really see what that is, but that was from my sister. Last thing I'll say is that I feel like I need to do a clean out of the bookcase. I have always known that I was going to clean out the bookcase before we moved anyway, but every time I post the bookcase, you guys say it gives you anxiety and it freaks you out because it is so, so messy. <laughs> it is really cluttered, so. What is it like to have a dog who has a concept of personal space? I don't know. And I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I hope he stays cuddly like this forever, although I do hope he figures out that he's like, really heavy now. <laughs> I just do chest down. The first minute is the worst. So far I can do almost three minutes. I really like wild swimming, which I feel like here we don't call it wild swimming. I feel like that's not a term I've heard before. But it's just swimming in lakes and rivers and I would guess the ocean as well. But that's what I've heard it called in the UK. I really enjoy it. Sometimes it feels as cold as this and sometimes it doesn't, but I have seen people use these gloves and socks and they're kind of like wetsuits and they're made of neoprene. Um, and when I move, I think I would like to get some of those because the worst part is your feet. Like my feet get cold so fast. 
and my feet start hurting. The rest of my body kind of goes numb and it's not unpleasant, but my feet hurt. And so if I was gonna, you know, a cold plunge is fine, but if I was gonna like really try to get into wild swimming regularly, I think I would get those socks. I, couldn't, I didn't film most of my workout, but I did a lower body day and it felt good. And then I just was in the sauna for like 15 minutes. I like to meditate in the sauna. I feel like it's just a really good place for it. And no one else is in here, so that's why I'm talking to you guys. It's about 15 minutes in the sauna. It's so, it's 109 degrees in, in there. It's so hot that I had to take off my necklace because my necklace was burning my skin. The cold pool honestly isn't that bad, except for my like toes. It's just getting over the mental block of knowing it's gonna be a little bit miserable at first until you adjust and it's like getting into that state of like mind over matter. But that's why I like to do it because I feel like it's an exercise in discipline. And I was talking to you guys in a vlog a while back about how one thing I envy about Matt is how disciplined he is. Um, and that's, a, a muscle that he's built within himself over a lifetime of like achieving the goals he set out to achieve and just keeping promises to himself. You know that quote that's like, discipline is the highest form of self-love. That's something I'm really trying to embody this year because I struggle with it, especially when my mental health is really bad and it's been really bad lately. Like I didn't vlog yesterday, today's Tuesday, I didn't vlog yesterday because my mental health was so bad. And it's really frustrating because I have all these ideas for content and for my life. I have all these creative ideas and when my mental health is bad, I feel like my depression just stifles everything interesting and expressive and fun about myself. Like, like it just dulls my sparkle. And it's really frustrating for me. And I, you have to like, respect your mental health obviously but I also want to build this muscle of discipline and like doing what I know is good for me and what I know will make me happy no matter how I feel because at the moment I've been really susceptible to like waking up and just feeling horrendously depressed and then like all my plans for that day go out the window and I think that's fine sometimes but I just I need to develop this like ability to push through because Sometimes that helps me feel better, like doing things that I know are good for me helps me feel better. And I just need to build that within myself. So anyway, talking to you guys has actually made this time go by so fast. I've been in here for like four and a half minutes now. Um, I guess I'll keep going, because I know it's good for me. So yeah.